Hey everybody, it's Sean here from Shooty School. We're working in the Song Creator today in Easy Drummer 3. This is the second video in a small video series, and you don't have to watch them all in order, but uh, if, you're, if you're more about a college course type curriculum, check my description to watch the first video first. So we're gonna check out a song structure that I've already established, and we're going to start producing the fills, the transitions, and just try and get this song into more presentable shapes. So do subscribe. If you don't want to see ads on my channel, ring the bell for notifications, watch all my videos right away because I don't put ads on my videos that have less than a thousand views. Let's get started. Now that we've completed a full song structure in my previous video, I know this is a typical song structure I like from my experience. No need for us to waste three minutes just listening to it. You should know that solid and typical song structures are valuable to the average music listener to hear simply because they can subliminally predict when sections of your song change. But by no means should you abide by a typical or pop song structure. It's just a general recommendation. You should make a con conscious choice to what's right either for you, your song, or the market who listens to it and then go from there. Now, what I think is most important is making sure our transitions from one file to the next are acceptable. I could write 10 guitar riffs that I think are great, but making 10 different guitar riffs work together is a completely different story. In this case, the song creator AI has taken a bit of the trial and error out of the equation, but let's check and possibly correct its work. I will simply listen to transitions from one beat to the next. Now, now, if I hold control, which is control plus option on Mac, I can zoom in and out with my mouse wheel like this. Also, if I hold shift, I can scroll horizontally through the song track with my mouse wheel like this. This is how I'm going to get around quickly. I think the fill in the middle of my first song verse is too busy to not be transitioning into another song part. So let's simplify it somehow so it just mends from the first part of the verse to the second part of the verse, not slams into it. We want to slam into other sections. In between the verse sections, we just kind of want to bridge from one to the other. I'll cut off the last measure by selecting the cut tool and clicking. I'll launch into edit play style by selecting this arrow icon. I'll loop this section by right clicking and selecting set loop area and I'll hit the space bar so we can audition. I think I'll just turn the snare amount down by selecting the snare and decreasing the amount knob a little. It's close. Let me open the grid editor. I'll collapse song structure for more room to work in. I'm going to remove the last two eighth note hi-hats by selecting them and hitting delete on my keyboard. And turn the remaining hi-hats to a more open feel. I'll reveal the other hi-hat articulations here. I'll select and drag the notes until I have a good hi-hat build which resolves with the symbol of the next measure. This works fine. Going from closed eighth note hi-hats to open quarter note hi-hats is a great trick for builds or transitions. If you agree with me, then you should totally steal that trick for yourself. Now what's bothering me overall is the verse is too long and doesn't build. And as songwriters, we tell stories not just by building songs, but making songs that build. You know, we don't want a flat plateau for planting corn. We want to climb mountains with our composition. See this little MIDI block here? That's the fill or turnaround we just worked on. And to the left of it are the first seven measures of verse one. So let's loop that. Let's play it and launch it into edit play style. This is a good power tip for those that think they need to seek out completely different beats for every move they make. I'll simply select the power hand menu and select closed edge. Now let's hear these three parts, the closed hats, into the turnaround and into the second half of the verse. Now that builds well in my opinion. 
And let me add a symbol halfway through the second part of the verse by making a cut by holding Alt, which is Option plus Command on Mac, and cutting in the middle of the block. I'll launch the second half of this MIDI block into edit play style and simply toggle the power button on the symbol opening hit. That works pretty easy, but there happens to be no kick drum hitting with that symbol, so I'll quickly add it with the groove editor. This is fine, but why the MIDI blocks down here magically merged back together in the song track, I don't understand that yet. It's either a bug or something the grid editor automates it. This was two separate blocks before I added the kick drum. So regardless, our edit worked and we're good to move on. Let me zoom out to see our song. Now that the second part of verse 1 has the new symbol and kick hit that we just added to it, I want that file to be the verses for the rest of my song. Since I don't need Song Creator's song parts anymore at this stage, I'll load this new verse beat that we just produced into the Song Creator by dragging it out of the song track and onto the Song Creator button here. It's now loaded as the source file of the Song Creator. Even though we could have control dragged that MIDI block where we needed it, this is a power feature that will be very helpful in more complex situations in crazy song structures, so do pay attention for your own needs with this, okay? Let's select the two MIDI blocks we want this source file to replace by selecting the first one and holding control, command on Mac, and clicking the second verse I want to replace. Now we have a custom selection that we couldn't achieve by dragging a selection. Now right click on your source file in the song creator column and select replace selected blocks on track and instantly those verses that we selected in the song track are now the source file with the added symbol and kick hit from the song creator source file. For the sake of time the verse transitions into the pre-course are good enough. The pre-chorus transitions into the chorus are pretty darn good. The chorus into the bridge could work depending on the vibe. I may want an opening hit as we've done recently in the verse like this. I can barely hear that opening hit though so I'll crank the velocity in the grid editor. This is better, and I could have cranked the velocity in edit play style as well, but it would have raised the velocity with all of the symbol hits if they existed, not just the single opening hit instance. The bridge sections work good enough for the sake of time and go into the verse pretty well. Now, when you double a chorus at the end of the song, you typically ramp up the last chorus as a finale. People don't want to just hear the same thing over and over again. What's the point of doubling it? It should hit harder or do something different. Let's see if we can get a quick fix going in the grid editor. Now that I kind of see the notes laid out, let's try doubling up the cymbals on the downbeats for starters. If you find it difficult to identify where you want to add or subtract notes in the grid editor or you just don't understand the basic drum beat terminology, consider checking out my theory playlist on my channel. For now, it solely focuses on communicating drums and rhythms and it could really change your skill set pretty fast. Consider it. All right, so this works for me now. Let's change up the middle fill and get rid of the obvious monotony of the cloned section. Now, instead of toms, 
I just did big kick and cymbal hits. It broadcasts a confident statement and at a time that I think is necessary to, to have those boastful hits. And at the end, I'll do a quick single stroke burst of snare and tom. Now that's a fully produced drum track. It's a quick and dirty for the sake of the length of this video, by the way, but we made many of the beats, transitions, and fills our own. And the song creator did a lot of the lifting when it came to moving quickly and saving time. Real quick, the last power feature, which is similar to what we used in the verses, if I open the song creator and, for example, decide later that I liked this chorus better than the one I already have, I can right click on it and select replace all choruses on track, meaning every purple block on the song track will instantly be replaced, a fantastic feature. Or as we did with the verse, I could replace just a single chorus by selecting it in the song track and select replace selected blocks on track. Or maybe I want this chorus to be the bridge section, an option I discussed in my last video. So I could just select the bridge MIDI blocks and replace the bridge sections with a chorus section instantly. This feature can automate many moves with a broad stroke. It's really powerful. Also, maybe you don't want to mess up your song this much with experimenting. Let's back up our work first by right-clicking and selecting all in an empty space in your song track. Then right-click on any MIDI block and select copy. Create a new track by clicking here. And right-click and paste all at the beginning of this new song track track. Now you have a copy of your song to experiment with and just tear it apart. These two tracks will not play together, but you can use them one at a time and test out ideas. And you can even copy and paste ideas from one to the other. It's a, a legit workflow. Now, if all this editing I did in this video was over your head, that's okay. For now, you can just use the song creator and not edit and have a full song within minutes. But it's good for you to acknowledge and see Easy Drummer 3's capability in this area because as you progress and your needs grow, you're going to start wondering how to manipulate your beats or you might even want someone talking to you about song structures and how to transition from one part to another and produce in general. So do try challenging yourself with what's in this video and do check my channel for more advanced editing videos. But before then, join me in my next video on the song creator arrangements and a few advanced notes for you to master this great feature in Easy Drummer 3. You won't regret it. This is Sean from Shooty School. Thanks for joining me. If you want to hang out with like-minded individuals, check out the Facebook and Discord groups. Links are in the description. If I've ever made your day, consider contributing to me. And I hope to catch you on the next one. Rock on.